Um, like, there was no way I could knock out a stack attacker. Hi everyone and welcome back to another episode of our VGC Road to Rank 2020 Battle Series. My name is Lee, also known as Osiris, and we're going to be finishing up this week with this team uh, that you can see on your screen in front of you that is and does belong to my good friend Will, also a patron of the channel, who won the Invitational, the Flinch Squad Invitational this past weekend and uh, kindly gave me this team to feature on the channel. Now we've had some really good games with it this week, not so good yesterday, but I'm feeling confident going into today's episode that we'll be able to turn those results around and get some better results on the board going forward and um, the team is down in the description below there is a raw pace and a poker pace to the team give will um, a follow on twitter as well at dempsey his tag will be down in the description and um, gonna be doing big things i think this season and um, he's a very very strong player and he's shown that throughout the circuit the circuit is starting again the 2020 season and um, this week uh, sorry, next week we'll be featuring the first matches from round one of the, uh, the Ultra Series Part 2 um, of the circuit. So I look forward to that. And as always, my friends, if you do enjoy this sort of content, please remember to drop a like on the video. Do subscribe to the channel for more Pokemon content and uh, leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on the team in general. If you've caught the invitation or what you thought of it and uh, what your thoughts are on, um, on the battles as well. So um, as I say, we'll play this team today. We'll play this team on Monday as well next week. And then we'll We'll come back in with a brand new team we'll probably play what i take one of four teams that'll be taking to the mss pcs over an open team this weekend there is a, um, a double mss saturday sunday and a double pc straight after them on saturday and sunday as well so i'm trying to to get four different teams because the pcs i think are best of one so you want something that's a, a little bit different that can work in a, a bit better catch your opponent off guard and obviously doing battle spot we know how important catching your opponent off guard with certain techs certain techniques can work in a best of one situation as well so um we need different teams for those so my idea is to take four teams win four times and come out ultimate champion of opens at the end of the weekend that would be ideal, but I don't know. It's going to be tough. There's going to be a lot of really good players there. You're going to have the likes of Ben, Jamie, uh, Ethan. I mean, I, the list could go on with all of the top UK players that will be there this weekend. So it's going to be a tough event, but a really good challenge. And it's, it's something I really want to do well at and uh, get off the mark as well. Uh, for those points to get to London next year because if I can get some points on the board now it makes things a little bit easier for the rest of the season sets me up nicely as well for going into Sword and Shield when that comes out which I want to be hitting super hard uh, come January and uh, it's not long till those games are released now it's uh, what are we it's about a month's time now and then we'll be get our hands on that lovely game or games i can't wait for them to come out it's going to be incredible and uh ethox is our first opponent from france have we played this guy we have played this guy this is a rematch so this is one that i said i think on wednesday that uh, we played in our second game if you want to go back and check that out I'll put a card up here for you um but i did say I'd love a best of three against this team because I uh, we got a lot of information about we know the Evelta is Z move and um, so we we can play around that a little bit better and I think it is a match that we could have definitely won uh, had we went into a best of three situation now I need to put my money where my mouth is and we need to do this so he's locked in we need to get into this one right now we've got a Veltal, Groudon, Mega Gengar, Tapu Fini, Incineroar and Shin Ninja um, okay so Coco was great for us last game um, Lunala, 100% we're bringing. Rayquaza, definitely. And do we bring... We brought Stack Attacker last game. And it can be very good, I think, in this game as well. Um, but Incineroar could also be just as good. Because if we can deny... Um, the Sulk onto the Shininja, then we're alright. But then, even if we don't, we're still sitting pretty good. It's just whether or not we want the Stacker. Um, the Intimidate could be quite useful. I don't know. I think Stack Attacker is probably a better option. I'm going to go Stacker. I don't really feel like I need the Intimidate. The Groudon doesn't scare me too much. I didn't even go into the team preview screen. I can't believe that. I'm sorry, friends. I just talked right through that thinking I was in it. So, anyway. 
I've got a follow off Ethox, so big shout out to him now. He is a player from France. Um, I'll give him a follow, and we're going into that best of three. So, um, good luck, have fun, my friend, if you are watching this. And uh, we are going to see Groudon and uh, Ivelto come out for my opponent. Right, now I think the thing that we've got to worry about here is uh, we have got wide guard, so we can potentially cover uh, what the uh, Groudon wants to go for. Earth power could be a bit tricky to deal with. Um, does it have earth power? Uh, if it does, then we're in a little bit of trouble. We are in a little bit of trouble. Uh, we know the Vault Switch won't get the Ivelto, um, and I don't think we revealed wide guard in our last game. So we could potentially wide guard and Thunderbolt this turn around. Um, we've got to worry about Tapu Fini coming onto the field as well. Um, I think I'm going to Thunderbolt, and I'm going to go for the wide guard here. I'd imagine the Ivelto might protect. If Elto withdraws, we're going to see Shin Ninja come out onto the field, which is fine. Like, you don't mind that too much. Wide guard coming out. We've got, just got to hope that it's Presbyterian Blades and not a Fire Punch or an Earth Power. So, we're not going to hit through the Shin Ninja here. Precipice Blades. So, that's that's fine. Like, totally fine. Okay? Because now we get the opportunity to bring our Rayquaza onto the field. Um, preserve Tapu Koko, because we've got to preserve it for later on in this game. Um, we'll bring in Ray. We've got to worry about toxic spam, of course. Um, we could go for another wide guard here. Um, but I think getting a Moon Guys Beam onto the Shininja now makes things a lot easier. If we see an ally switch come out, it's not too bad because Moon Guys Beam into Groudon's always welcome. Um, but Groudon's not really the issue for us here. Um, it's the, the Pokemon kind of around Groudon. We're going to see the Protect here. We might see a Toxic come out from the Sheninja. It's, it's something that we do see. We're not going to see a Shadow Sneak. Um, Moonguys Beam should be able to um, break this Sash. Which it does. Which is good. And now it's under a bit of pressure going into the next turn. So uh, we are going to see the Toxic again. It is going to be into the Lunala though. Okay. Now, I don't want to allow this Shininja to get another Toxic into a, a Rayquaza because the last time that happened, um, that's what really punished our Rayquaza play because the Toxic ticker made things very difficult for us to get around. Um, so I'll go for the, the, the Dragon Ascent into the Shininja um, and I'll go for a Moonguise Beam into the Groudon. So if you've got Ally Switch here, we get the Dragon Ascent into the Groudon, we get the Moonguise Beam into the Sheninja. So the Ally Switch here not really going to help my opponent out too much. Sheninja going to withdraw. We're going to get a free Dragon Ascent into a Tapu Fini, which is absolutely incredible for us because I think the one thing that we want here is to um, get some damage onto this thing before it can start disrupting our side of the field. Two Dragon Ascents should be enough to get it. Should, one should not proc its, um, its berry, so that should be fine. Um, and the Moonguise Beam going to do a nice chunk to Groudon, whatever it decides to go for. We do overwrite the uh, the weather there. Uh, no Protect from the Groudon. We are going to get the Dragon Ascent, like I say, into this Tapu Fini now. And do some good damage. Put it in range for another one to pick up the knockout the next turn. There we go. Got to worry about Dragon Claw still on this Groudon. But um, hopefully that's not an option. Because we didn't see it in that first game. So uh, I would be surprised if we saw it now. If we lose the Ray, it is a little bit of a shame. Fire Punch coming out, it's going to be into Rayquaza, okay. Man, that does so much damage, critical hit, that's not what we want to see. Um, okay, well, the Toxic is ticking down. Um, I still think we'll take another, we'll take another Fire Punch from this Groudon here. Um, come on battle let's tick through the, the DS being very slow here we'll go for another dragon ascent into the finny here my opponent really hasn't got any switches in either so the finny goes down um, and we can get another moon guys beam into the ground on or are we better off switching into um, nah we've got that's the thing we've got stacker and we've got corporal in the back two pokemon we don't want to switch into potential precipice blades or fire punch so I think um We'll go for the same again. We'll get rid of the Finny. Get Moonguys Beam onto this Groudon. It should put the Groudon in range for an extreme speed uh, from our Rayquaza. So we don't need to worry too much about the Veltal coming in and uh, going from possibly a Sucker Punch there. Um, but we have to worry about it because I think 
thinking back to that episode, I think the Veltal actually outspeeds our Equaza, which isn't ideal. Um, Mungas beat me at doing a nice chunk of damage. There's the Fire Punch. Hopefully, just procs a berry. No crit this time, which is excellent. The berry procking there on the Ray. Uh, so, alleviating a bit of damage there. Um, and maybe we see the Shininja come back onto the field now for my opponent. But it's more likely to be that Eveltal, I think. Um, and I think what we have to probably do this next turn is, yeah, just double the Groudon. Because Eveltal is going to outspeed. I don't know if an extreme speed will get the crowd on. That's the only problem. Um, and we kind of want. I think what I'll do is just to be a little bit safe. I'm going to protect Rayquaza. I'm going to go for a Moongas Beam into the crowd on. Because as long as we've got Coco out next to our Rayquaza, we're kind of protecting, Evelt, uh, protecting our Rayquaza a little bit. The only issue is that the Delta Streams kind of. It's negating. Um, the Thunderbolt damage onto the Veltal is a little bit annoying. Okay, so we're just going to see a bit of a dead turn here. A far player. I mean, one thing we could potentially do is go Wide Guard and get our Coco onto the field for free. It's just this Veltal outspeeding. The Rayquaza, and if there's one thing I would change about the team potentially, it is the fact that I think I would probably have the Ray at least at speeding um, base 100s, um, because I think that 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 is hindering us r right now. Uh, being able, because if we can take down the Groudon, then Coco has a much easier job coming in. Uh, we are going to see the Groudon switch out. I wonder if the Veltal actually goes for. The Lunala here to get rid of it, potentially. Of course, for a Tailwind. I mean, we get rid of the Sheninja. The Tailwind isn't ideal for us at all. Um, but Lunala, still gonna hang on. Still got Wide Guard, so I mean, it does help us out a little bit. What? What happened there? Did we just protect with Lunala? I'm a bit confused with what happened. Um, okay, I think we discharge. Do we discharge? We could trick room. Is it really going to help us? Probably. If we can get a trick room off here, that would be absolutely amazing, actually. Um, do we predict the ally switch, though? That's the thing. I think you go for the Lunala, whatever you do. No, I'm going to go into Veltal. I'm going to trick room. Thunderbolt, Trick Room. Yvelto Protect. Okay. Are you going to go for the Toxic into the Coco? No, Shadow Sneak. It will get the Lunala through this Cassie Berry, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. 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 But we do have... We do have a good old uh, Stack Attacker. And the Groudon, I think, is in range for the Continental... For the crash. Just the same who's going to do a lot to stacks. That's the only problem. Well, the Z move shouldn't take us down. It shouldn't take us down. Right, we'll go for the Thunderbolt. We'll go for the Trick Room. The thing if we get the trick room up here, I think Stack Attacker can kind of almost win this game. It's about taking this E move. Because I think you've got to go for it here, which we are going to see. Yeah. But Stack Attacker is so defensively but like strong. It should take it. And I'm pretty sure when I played Eveltal myself, Z Veltal, um, like there was no way I could knock out a stack attacker. Unless we see a critical hit. Oh, come on. 
So frustrating, really. I mean, yeah, okay. Um, gotta try and get a Thunderbolt onto Yveltal. I'm gonna go for the Yveltal, I'm not gonna. I'm not going to play these games of, of chasing ally switches and predicting them. We're just going to target what's in front of us. Ooh, okay, the melt will burn out. All right, this is this is where it gets a bit of a pain um, because this Sheninja can start toxicing us again. This is why Sheninja is a pain in the ass. This is why not getting that trick room up is a pain. All right. Yeah. Killing pillars out, okay. Isn't extreme speed gonna get the ground on? I really don't know if it will. That would be my problem, I think. I think we've gotta go for it. We can't really do anything with an extreme speed will get the jump on an ally switch. I'm going to go for the extreme speed. If we can get the crowd on, then it makes things a lot easier for us, I think, going into the, the next few... Oh, we don't get it. We don't get it. Okay. Right, well, we'll I think we just lose this now because there's no way we can beat... There's no way we can beat... Uh... What are we going to see? Fire punch. Okay. We can't beat the Groudon without... We've got to extreme speed it. We're kind of locked here. Um, because the Shadow Sneak will just get Ray. Unless the Groudon protects here and then they don't go for the Shadow Sneak. Which I, I don't know why you wouldn't. Yeah. And then get the Ray and then that's game. I do think the, the crit uh, on the stacks really did kind of hinder our ability to close this one up. I think if there's no crit there, we get the trick room and I don't really know how they come back from that. They still got the ability to ally switch and do a lot of like faffing round, but I think <sighs> Groudon comes in, like we get rid of Sheninja pretty easily or Groudon um, and then we still got Ray at that point as well, which underspeeds the Veltal. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, good game to my opponent. <sighs> that team is nasty, man. And we're not doing well with the team at all. We're not picking up the wins like we need to. Um, but never mind. We'll move on. We'll try and find our next opponent. And uh, we will come back strong. Or we will try and come back strong. I'm just going to say sorry, Will. Sorry. But... Um, you know, the interesting thing is, all this, all these weeks we've been playing on the channel and I haven't seen any Veltal. And then as soon as we jump to using Lunala, I don't think I've seen as much as much Veltal <laughs> as I've seen in the past, like, four weeks. Oh, see, this guy is too nice, you see? Followed me because we matched up, followed him back, and now he's saying, hey, so sorry for the crit on the stack. Now that's a nice guy, but he doesn't need to apologize. You don't need to apologize, man. You played that super well, um, and uh, like, there's no need to apologize about it. Very nice and courteous. What a nice guy. Big shout out to Ethox. Uh, it is Ethox VGC. If you guys want to follow him, drop him a, um, a follow on Twitter, um, and I'm just going to reply now. We're going to find our next opponent, so I'm going to cut it here, and we'll come back when we find our next opponent, my friends. And we've got our next opponent of the episode, so we'll hop straight into team preview. Right, our next opponent is playing a team of Amoongus, Tapu Lele, Salamence, Incineroar, Lunala and Groudon. So Lunala, Groudon, the restricted combination, support and cast, Incineroar, Salamence. You'd normally see a Tapu Fini where the Tapu Lele is, but we've got the Tapu Lele for potential psychic spam, uh, potential protection against uh, priority attacks as well, and then the Amoongus to round things up. Give a bit of a trick room counter to this team. You'd probably assume that it's more Tailwind orientated, but there is trick room elements there, especially a trick room mode through the Lunala that you have to watch out for. Um, now, I think... 
Rayquaza has a good time for us here, but we have to be careful. Uh, there's double Intimidate, which is going to really affect our ability to do a lot of work. Uh, the Tapu Lele could be scoffed as well. It might be worth us leading Tapu Koko if they do lead Tapu Lele to kind of scout that out. Um, Tapu Koko here, not too bad either. Does good work against the Salamence. Uh, can do good work against the Incineroar. I break the Shadow Shield on that Lunala as well. Just have to watch out for the Groudon here. Um, I definitely want Rayquaza, I think, in this match. And probably... I think what we'll do is we'll lead Lunala. I bring Incineroar for a change. And I'm going to bring Rayquaza as well. And we'll lock in. Come on, let's get to the right screen. So here we are, we're going into it. And, uh, right, I'm going to say we need to pull out a win. We need to pull out a win for this last one today. Before we go into the weekend. I feel like I've done Will a disservice. He was like, yeah, he was my team. Like, all oh, up for it. And <laughs> now I've done it. And I'm like, oh, what have I done? I'm not showcasing it very well. But I think we've had some tough matchups along the way as well. Uh, we had that really good one to kick us off this week. And it's been a bit up and down since then. We've got Groudon and Incineroar coming out for us here. Uh, we've obviously got the fake out as a problem. Um, but at the same time, it's a nice opportunity to get our Rayquaza onto the field. Um, and potentially get a Moon Guys Beam into the ground. But the, the problem is as well, if we don't see a, a fake out here, uh, you could see... The Groudon go to break uh, Shadow Shield on Lunala and then the Incineroar go for the follow-up to pick up the knockout there. Um, it's too risky for me to, to go for a Volt switch out with, with Tapu Koko. That could really backfire, especially turn one. You don't really want to be doing that because you could see a fake out and just a Precipice Blade. And uh, if we lose Koko, well, we lose the resource turn one, which is never going to be good. And um, it just limits us switching later in the game, which makes it a lot easier for my opponent. So you want to always try and avoid like turn one losses like turn one chaos on your end because um you're limiting like your opponent's already limiting your ability to switch around and making predictability a lot easier so um you don't want to lose things so early even though i've repeated that like four times but it's it's an important point so we'll get rayquaza in we'll play it a little bit safer here um getting rain pretty safe we'll probably take a fake out overheat Oh, we are going to see the double in there, but instead of um, the uh, double in on uh, Lunala, we're going to see just a U-turn to my opponent knock on for the fake out. We could have went for the, the Volt Switch, but like I say, the drawback of doing that and then getting faked out and a Precipice Blade to lose Coco is never going to be a good option. Now we're going to, going to see uh, Salamence come in. Interesting that we see uh, Overheat come out from Groudon, though. Uh, we've got to worry about potential... Um, Draco Meteor here. Uh, now, we've got a couple of options. What we could potentially do is bring Coco back onto the field. And why God? Um, expecting maybe an eruption. Because I'd imagine eruption overheat are the options on this Groudon. Um, we could protect Rayquaza as well. Just to scout out. I think that's not a bad idea. If we scout out, we'll just protect Ray. Um, and we'll bring in Incineroar. For Lunala, I'll keep Lunala for later on in this game. We're getting Intimidate onto both targets as well. Potentially, a Groudon could be mixed as well, so you can't discount that. Um, it could have Precipice Blades, which could be, it could be handy for. And the, the the Salamence likely has Double Edge as well, so that will help out there. We'll see the the Groudon actually switch out. I'm gonna see Incineroar come back onto the field, uh, cycling that Double Intimidate. Uh, but now the Groudon's gone, it does make it a bit easier for us to get our Coco back onto the field, uh, lose these Intimidate drops with our Rayquaza, and we can potentially pivot out the next turn with our own Incineroar to get Rayquaza back in onto the field with no Intimidate drops. We are going to see one of the Intimidators lose its ability for that Aerial 8, Mega Salamence, Mega Evolving here. Uh, we do protect Rayquaza. Uh, we'll see Draco meet here, yeah. and that's a scout. <laughs> there, we did think about, so good job that we did. Um, now, I am going to go for the Coco back in, and I'm going to go for a U-turn onto the Incineroar. Because Coco puts instant pressure onto the Salamence, um, especially with Dazzling Gleam, Thunderbolt. Um, might be better going for Dazzling Gleam at this point, though. Just because of the Groudon potentially switching in. Um, now we are going to see Groudon come back onto the field. And I wonder if we'll see an uh, uh, another U-turn from this opposing... Incineroar here. 
But uh, we will just switch Ray back out, get Coco in. And there's IU turn into Sinro. I think the worst thing here would be potentially a Flare Blitz into our Coco, but you'd be Flare Blitzing into what was a Rayquaza, so I don't know if you're going to do that. I think a U turn is more likely to come out here, um, just so they can keep active that. Um, Well, we are going to see a Flare Blitz, and it is going to be into the Core Core. Huh. That's mad. Madness. Okay. Uh, well, I really don't mind that too much at all, because it means we do have the opportunity to go Volt Switch into the Incineroar and Mega Evolve and Soul Stance here. Because I don't think the Groudon stays in or protect, uh, like attacks. I really don't. This is a Sin Pat Ice. You might do, but I don't know. Incineroar is likely to U-turn pivot out, but we can do the same with our Incineroar. And we could have attacked here with with Rayquaza, but I think it's better to take the opportunity while we have got the opportunity to to get a Sword Stance up, which we have. I think right now it seems like a pretty safe thing to get and take advantage of. Um, we need to keep Coco as well because I think it really helps out with the Salamence, um, especially because it is carrying that, that Draco Meteor. And we're doing some nice damage to that Incineroar here. And uh, do we get our Incineroar back onto the field? Yeah, I think we probably would like to. It'd probably be better to do that. And then we've got Fake Out the next turn when my opponent hasn't. Even if they U turn out, they're not going to have access to that Fake Out the next turn. Um, let's see, is it an eruption? There we go, it's our sword stance going up. Precipice blades, okay. So it is mixed. We get a bit lucky actually because we avoid that. So that's that's good for us. Um, I'd imagine the Salamence will come back onto the field now. But we could potentially make the play of going fake out into Salamence and going for another another sword stance put us on the plus four so when that <laughs> when the uh, the old boy Incineroar comes back onto the field we're on plus three which will make sweeping through this team a lot better and it puts a lot more pressure on our side of the field uh, to force switches from my opponent might see the Groudon switch out here uh, I'm not too worried if it stays in and goes for a Precipice Blades. Like, Incineroar is going to be able to take that after the Intimidate. we just got to be careful around this Salamence. Like, ideally, what we want is... Um, we want Coco out on the field. Maybe it would have been better to go... Okay, so we're just going to see Protect there. Um, we might see a Precipice Blades. Because the thing is, like... The problem is... A plus four extreme speed isn't gonna get Salamence. It's too it's too strong to take that. Uh, there's a precipice blade. It's a nice play from my opponent. Uh, this is why the U-turn would have probably been better. But actually, this isn't the worst thing. It's not the best. It's, not, it's definitely not the worst. But but the thing is now we are gonna be able to get Coco onto the field, um, and we put a hell of a lot of pressure onto this Salamence. Now, whether or not we go for the Dragon Ascent into the Groudon, or we go for an Extreme Speed Dazzling Gleam. Um, does the Salamence stay in? I don't think the Salamence stays in. I think we go Dazzling Gleam, and I think we go Dragon Ascent into the Groudon. The worst thing here is, though, if the, the Salamence stays in and goes for... If it goes for a Draco, it will get us, and then we lose Coco, and then we just lose the match. But I'm going to do it, because I think the Salamence feels too pressured from the air. The Groudon might protect here. Probably does. If it doesn't, it's going down, because we're plus three. There's no way it takes that. Wow. Okay, did we actually get the Incineroar? Yeah. 
and then we're going to get the crowd on. Okay, maybe I think my opponent would have been better there going for a protect with crowd on because plus three dragon ascent. There's no way anything takes this other than like possibly stack attacker, dusk main. Very few Pokemon. Groudon going to go down. Way plus three. Salamence going to come back in. Dazzling Gleam, Extreme Speed going to do it. And it'll depend on what my opponent's fourth Pokemon is, which we haven't seen yet. I don't think, have we? It's Lunala. We do have to worry about Lunala, of course. But we've got our own Lunala. And we've got the Cassie Berry still active. So we're not in the worst position. Dazzling Gleam could be problematic for us for sure uh sorry uh wide god could be really problematic for us um because draco would pick up the knockout i think what we could do is scout out the wide god go for a protect here with rayquaza the wide god comes out then okay no wide god this is all right because this puts salamence in extreme speed range yeah, and Nala probably takes down Coco. Oh, Trick Room. Okay, I don't mind that too much because an Extreme Speed still gets. Um, I don't really want to switch in Lunala yet either. Um, or do I? I think I take this opportunity to switch in Lunala because I think we go extreme speed into the men's and I think this is where you go if you're my opponent you go for the opportunity to to take down the Rayquaza because we just protected with your Lunala oh you don't okay you don't protect I would have thought maybe a protect would have come out there but no okay uh, this is a move it's gonna be into Rayquaza 100% you need to get rid of the Ray uh, you're not really worried about the Coco it's not like threatening too much especially with the trick room map um, and now the z-move burned Ray, we go down um, and now we're gonna be able to get our Coco in and now with the z-move gone we've got the Cassie Berry even with the Cassie Berry we take the z-move so we weren't really too worried the worst thing that could have happened there was them going into us on the switch in but it made sense that the um, they go for the Rayquaza. The only thing I would like I would say is if you protected the the Ments there, I think the Ments would have been the better thing to protect. Uh, although it might not have had protect. I don't know if we we've, we've seen protect. So we're gonna see Moonguys Beam. It's gonna be through Shadow Shield and the uh, Cassie Berry doing nothing. Man, that's crazy. And we'll return with our own Moongeist, and uh, this will be enough to pick up the knockout onto the opposing Lunala. And will we pick up a win to end the week on for you, my friend? And I think this last one's been a really nice battle for us today. Got requires it up to like plus four at one point, and um, we kind of swept through from there. So really good game to my opponent, and um, a nice way for us to at least finish the week with um, a little bit of a victory there. So we'll wrap it up for the weekend, my friends. Whatever you're up to, have a great time. If you're at events, let me know down in the description. I wish you all the best. Um, if you are going out and playing at events if any of you are watching and are going to be in Orpington this weekend make sure to come and say hi at me at the event it would be great to see you there and uh, if not I will see you all on Monday next week we'll finish up with this team on Monday and then we'll play a new team on Tuesday so uh, have a great weekend whatever you're up to, great day and I will see you all later thanks for tuning in guys and I'll see you for another one very soon so until then, care and bye bye